So today is Good Friday, I'm going to make some hot cross buns. I only made these once before and it was a few years ago, so I'm not sure how it's going to go, but let's give it a whirl. So you've got to bring 300 ml of full fat milk to the boil, remove from the heat and add 50 grams of butter. And you want to leave it, you want to leave it cool until it reaches hand temperature. So the chef is allowed some olives if I cook. There's my sous chef. Hi. And then you've got to add 500 grams of strong bread flour, one teaspoon of salt, 75 grams of caster sugar, and seven grams of fast acting yeast into a bowl. You make a well in the center. I've just made a little hole here, well, quite a big hole actually, for when I put the wet ingredients in. You pour the milk and butter mixture into that well. Add one beaten egg. Oh my God, the walls have been breached. And then using the wooden spoon, mix well until everything comes together. And then once you've mixed it all up really well, then you use your hands for the rest. This is seriously sticky and gloopy, and I'm kind of wondering, is this correct? Because it's literally, I can't work with it. <laughs> Look at this. What the hell is that? Brand. This is very tricky, guys, I'll be honest. So once you've done that, process which is really tricky to be honest. You transfer the dough into a lightly oiled bowl, cover that with cling film and leave it for one hour or until it's doubled in size. Zesting an orange. So our tick is biddy. Biddy? Yeah, while he's busy zesting his lemons, we haven't got any mixed peel. So the recipe says you've got to have one orange anyway. But we thought we'd kind of counter the lack of mixed peel by adding more orange zest and lemon, some, some lemon zest. I don't know if it's going to pay off, let's hope so. I hope people aren't eating bits of shredded lemon. <laughs> so that's the amount we're using because we don't really mix peel, but if you do have mixed peel then skip this, apart from the one orange zest which you need to add anyway. Chopped apple. I'm transferring the sliced apple into the plate, but realistically I'm transferring a lot of it into my mouth because what I like to do it's like to eat the apple. Just if I find bits with um, some peel on it, I'm like, rather than taking the peel off, I just eat it. So guys, you can see that's doubled in size for sure. With the dough still in the bowl, we're gonna add the sultanas, the apple, the zest, and if you have the mixed peel, if you have that, we don't, but if you have that, and then you've got to knead it, make sure everything is combined and mixed together and then proof it for another hour. This step is a lot easier than the previous one because the dough is nice and spongy and actually you can pick the entire thing out of the bowl like this it's very easy to work with so we're going to now cover this up with the cling film again it's just going to proof now for an hour you're actually supposed to add some oil to the cling film before you reseal it so do that do that smell coming from this oh my god what do you think it looks gorgeous. Yeah. It smells amazing. I don't know if it looks gorgeous. It looks like just squished dough to me, but... None well, of the dough looks really nice to me. No, it doesn't look like very edible to me, but oh, it does. Well, okay. The smell is amazing. Well, if you think it looks I lovely, think it looks gorgeous. I'm yeah. not going to tell you what to think, but uh, I will say that I disagree <laughs> and I want to put it in your face. Well, the next step, okay, you've got to divide the dough into 15 pieces each weighing about 75 grams and then you've got to leave them proof for another hour either placing cling film over them like before or placing a tea towel over them as they proof so leave it for one more hour and we need to do that over and over and when you place them on the tray you need to give enough spacing because they are going to expand so bear that in mind okay here are our hot crust buns got a few like that so they're not all the same size but you know what we don't care they're close enough so yeah, we're going to like leave them proof for another hour and then it's time to put them in the oven, I think, right? Yeah. So for the crossing paste, you need 75 grams of plain flour and five tablespoons of water. Put the plain flour in the bowl and then you gradually add the five tablespoons of water and you stir it until it makes a thick paste. And then basically you put it in a piping bag and then make the cross on the bun. And that's it. Okay, then we put the crosses on them little bit skew but what can you do so you put them in the oven 200 degrees for 20 minutes and while that's doing its thing I'm gonna get some apricot jam I'm gonna get three tablespoons of apricot jam put it on a pot heat it up and then sieve it through 
And then while the jam is still warm, you're going to brush it over your hot cross buns. Just give it a nice coating of it. And it's important to do it while they're still hot as well. While the jam's still hot and the hot cross buns are still hot. There's the finished product. Hot cross buns. Suspicious crosses. So I'm going to give these a whirl. No, good. And a cup of tea, forget about it. That is better than shop bought for sure. It's light, it's fluffy, it's soft, and it's got lots of flavour and it tastes really, really good. Everyone else seems to like it as well, so bonus. The only thing is on the recipe it says 30 minutes prep, but it's like three hours of proofing. So that's a little bit misleading, but it was really good, really tasty. Big thumbs up. So those were a success for sure. And that's if I do say so myself. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing the chaos that ensued to make these hot crust buns. And I hope you guys have a happy and blessed Easter. So that's all guys. Bye. This man, he's my favourite man ever. He's my favourite person in the whole world. Oh, well there you go. Yeah. The last bit. Delicious.